2,000 years after the departure of Jesus the Christ. The prophets are back to teach the real Jews, the 12 tribes of Israel, their true nationality. This is their campaign. And that's what God wants us to do, so we matched it up. Now give me um, Deuteronomy 22. So this is for, this is for you. Um, I'm gonna give a, uh, bring out a couple laws for you, so that you can now change and know what God wants you to do. Deuteronomy 22 verse 5: The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So the Bible says a woman shall not wear what pertains unto a man, right? It's common. That's common. Because what do we see a lot of a lot of women wear today? Pants, right? Because now we've been taught that it's okay. That oh, sisters say, oh, these are women pants, but there's no such thing. That's like me wearing it, uh, coming out here with a, a, a dress with flowers on it, and then put a lion in the front saying this is a man's dress. You know, that'd be like crazy. You can be like a dress is a dress, right? So women are not to wear pants because God. Now remember when we were still in our own land, were women wearing pants? When we were in Jerusalem, women didn't wear pants. Why? Have you ever seen a princess wear pants? No, they don't do that. You're royal, sis. Our sisters out here are royalty. So they're supposed to act like it. Understand that. When you put on that, that apparel, people look at you and say, there's something different about that sister. Because look at uh, the example that we show to our young sisters. It's disgraceful because you see the young sisters out here with tight, tight pants showing off everything. Everything. And then, and then the man standing behind just watching everything go by. Is that right? Is that honorable? That's not honorable. So the men now, our uh, women have no honor. And the men can't defend it because they have none. So we have to bring up, we have to bring ourselves back to that honorable and royal estate. So this is royal apparel. Now um, read that. The woman shall not wear 
that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So the same way a man or a woman is not supposed to wear man's clothes, man should not wear women's clothes. So you shouldn't see me out here with a skirt on with high heels. It says a woman and man should not. Why, why does it say that? Because there's a spirit that goes along with it. So now you have all this, I'm an independent woman. I don't need a man. But from Genesis, God said he created the woman to be with the man. They said now they too shall be one flesh. So I was ordained by God as a woman and she wants to be with a man. So she feels like as a defense, I don't need a man. I don't need one. I'm, I'm, I can do battle by myself, right? But that's not according to God. Hold on, hold on, brother. Hold on. Don't, don't destroy. Now we need to For all that do so, God said, all that do those things are abominations unto the Lord thy God. So God said those things are abominable. Right? So that's why we read in, in um, Acts 3.19 that you got to repent. I mean, now you know God doesn't like it. So that's why Christ died so that you can change. He died for us to change. So now you have the option to say, you know what? I'm done with that. God said do it. Listen, I serve God and God alone. I'm going to do it. But and you just so happened the most and I do happen follow y'all teachings on YouTube. Oh, you do? Yes, oh, I agree. I agree. Oh, Let me read on to what? Ecclesiastic is 15, verse 13. Well, now let's see what, because it said that all that do so are abomination. Let's see how God feels about abomination. The Lord hated all abomination. Read it again. The Lord hated all abomination. So God hates all abomination. Oh, that's why he, he made it a point to tell Moses. He said, tell my people and make sure it gets recorded that I hate these things. Read it. And they that fear God. So those people that fear God, love it not. They don't love abomination. So they're not going to be attached to pain if you love God. You're not going to be attached to pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster if you love God. Right? You're not going to be attached to homosexual contact if you love God. Let's go. Right? Give me, um... Brother, I said already, it's not about the color. Hold on, hold on. Brother, the color of my shirt does not matter. I said that already. I said that already. This is our uniform. He has on a black shirt, he has on a purple shirt. That's what I'm doing. So he gave his son his son. We don't have to be the same. God guys. We don't have to be in Do you understand what he's saying about the color? What color are you talking about? He's talking about the color of my shirt. Huh? You talking about the color of the skin? Stop talking, hold on. What are you talking about? Hold on, hold on, stop. I don't understand you, that's why I'm telling you to stop. Hold on. Okay, stop. Give me, um, huh? But I'm telling you to stop. What color are you talking about? Wait, before you start, because he's rambling. Are you talking about the color of the skin, or are you talking about the color of my clothes? The color of the skin, right? Hold on, stop, stop, stop. Listen, listen to me. The color of your skin does not matter. It does, wait, 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 it doesn't matter. You understand? What did I, hold on, what did I just say? What did I just say? What did I just say? This, this, this is what you're talking about. Wait, this, this, you're talking about this color. Guess what, brother, you don't have to wear purple, it's our uniform. I'm not teaching that. This, look, this is a black shirt, this is a black shirt. He, he, all right, sis, sis, we'll, we'll, we'll go, because he's confused. He's not, he doesn't understand his own question. Give me that. Isaiah. So, sis, this is for you, because you said. Hold on, hold on. No, wait, hold on. Now we're going to deal with that next. Come as you are. But you said, now, um, you started reading the Bible yesterday, right? But you said you started reading from Genesis. Now, we do have to read through the Bible, but God tells us in the Bible how to read the Bible. Read that in Isaiah. Isaiah 28, verse 9. 
whom shall he teach knowledge? So it says, who shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Who, wait, hold on, hold on. Brother, where are you from? You from Haiti? Yeah. Hold on. Officer Ruben, he, I don't, I don't, maybe he speaks Creole. Talk to him. He'll talk to you. I don't, I don't Go ahead. Read that again for the sister. Whom shall he teach knowledge? So who shall God teach knowledge? And whom shall he Officer. make to understand doctrine? Who shall he make to understand the doctrine that's in the Bible? Officer. Them that are weaned from the milk. Those that are weaned from the milk. The milk is the basics of the Bible, right? Read. And drawn from the breast. And drawn from the breast. Read. For precept. God said precept. What? Must be upon precept. So precept is the law, right? Law upon law. It must be upon law. Just like how you saw how I rushed into Deuteronomy 22 to show you about the path that is abominable. And then I, I went jumped from there to Sirach to show you how God feels about it. So it says precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. It said line upon line. So one line here and one line there. Because understand, if you read the New Testament, everything that Christ said in the New Testament, I can see the Old Testament. And it's very important that you understand the Old Testament. Because when you read it and then you read the New Testament, you know, where Christ will say something like, oh, wait, I remember I read that in Deuteronomy. Oh, wait, I remember Moses said that. Read Isaiah 28, verse 9. Verse 10, for, verse 10, for precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little. Here a little. In there a little. So some people say, oh, well, why do you jump from here to there? Because we're not here to just read the whole Bible. That's the way that it was always taught. That's the way Christ taught the apostles. He said, you guys are supposed to have the basic understanding because you should have read it already. Now I'm jumping from here to there to show you. See what he said here? This is what it actually means. He goes over it again here. Right? That's why we read it the way that we read it. So the Bible's reset the Bible reset. Now you made a statement about it. He says, come as you are. Now give me uh, Tim Timothy. He's in 1 Timothy 2 and 9. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. And this is uh, directed to the women. This is what Timothy was charging the women. Yeah. Meaning, uh, commanding the women. In like manner also, in like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Modest apparel. So that's what our sisters have to get back to is modest apparel. Now we say modest, that doesn't mean like how you see uh, in uh, the Arabian women's dress with covered down from head to toe. That's not what it means. But it means now not going out there showing off your chest, showing off your back part to be covered. Back. Yeah, um, I still couldn't find any scripture. We're, I guess we're working yeah, on some posters with uh, some to show how our, our oh, wives actually wild. dress. Because they wear dresses down to, you know, dresses down past the calves, down past the calves. Yeah. So they're covered. So when they sit down, their dress doesn't come all the way up here. Right, they don't have to be covering themselves. Like, their shape isn't all out there. Their chest is their cleavage is showing. Why? Because that's when you dress that way, you're looking for a certain attention. And not only that, what's so good makes it even worse is that you're getting that attention from some man. He, you don't know what he might be about. He might be single, and he's trying to be. He's trying to be. Uh, do the right thing until he gets a wife and keep his mind pure and then here you go walking around dressed like that and he's like oh man he, you know now he's battling certain demons from what he saw right from what he sees so that's why our women should dress modestly God gave us a dress code right he got his control stuff also but it's twofold the women is not supposed to dress that way God said the women are supposed to wear a dress dress modestly but any man is supposed to uh, be uh, control himself right? but now give me because uh, he said come as you are now give me. Uh, it's weird. That's why you gotta, you gotta pray that it's not strict. Yeah, now, chapter yeah. 1, verse 8. There's a lot of people out today. Chapter 1, verse 8. And it shall come to pass. In the day of the Lord's sacrifice, <laughs> that now is now is prophesying. He said, in the day of the Lord's sacrifice, that means when Christ returns. That's the day of the Lord's sacrifice, read. That I will punish. That he will what? Punish. Say that word again. That I will punish. When Christ comes back, he's going to punish what? The princes. The princes is Israel. Read. And the king's children. That's it is. Israel. And it all such as all such as are clothed. As are what? As are clothed uh -huh. with strange apparel. So he said you will punish those who are clothed with strange apparel. So that's showing you that, listen, there's a dress, this is a prophecy. The prophecy cannot be broken. 
So this, he said now from Zephaniah, this is revealed to him that when Christ comes back, he's gonna he's gonna punish those that are clothed with strange apparel. Right. That's why now he sent men out to teach and show that listen, you have to come back to the righteous way of dressing. Let me show you something. Because this this dress code is a new thing on the earth. A very new thing. It, it's that one. Hold this up. Look how when we were in a cotton field, look at that. These are our foremothers. What were they wearing? Dresses. They were wearing dresses. Look at that. These are our foremothers in the cotton field. And we have women come up sometimes saying, oh, well, what if I have to work? What harder labor are you doing than that? Or you can't wear a dress. Right. Now I understand if you have a uniform and, it, and your job won't let you wear it, then hey, wear a dress to work, change. When you get out of work, put back your dress, put your dress back on. But if you can help it, then wear a dress. That's our dress code. Our, our sisters were in the cotton fields wearing dresses. Let me tell you when dresses started. In the 1950s. Pants, I'm sorry. In the 1950s with a, a white woman named Amelia Bloomer. That's why at first they were called Bloomers. She was started the feminist movement and she got all the white women now to rebel against their men. And they tried to recruit the black woman also, saying, hey, you don't have to be under your man. Which was nonsense because from when we, when we came over here on slave ships, the black woman was always over the black man here. That was from Willie Lynch. The white, the black woman was set up over the black man. So they said, no, you need rights from your man also, so you can wear pants. Because women started working in factories at that time because you had World War II. So the men went off to go fight war and the women had to go into the factories. And they were wearing dresses, but the dresses get, kept, get caught in, uh, kept getting caught in the machinery. So the women started wearing pants in factories to work. And then through that, the feminist women said, we can wear pants all the time. And they recruited the black women to do the same. But that was never our dress code. Our sisters understand our princesses. You're a princess, she's a princess. Those sisters there are princesses. Right. Right. Princesses do not wear pants. Right. Right. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org